Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the four major greenhouse gases that result from anthropogenic activities. And so in order to do this, we need to talk about them in a ranking system. And so a group of scientists came together and coined the term global warming potential, also referred to as GWP. So a GWP is essentially just a number that represents the relative contribution of a gas to or toward, I should say, global warming. Okay. And so essentially this number is uh, determined from taking three different factors into account. So the first one is, what is the concentration? So how much of every single one of these greenhouse gases actually exists in our atmosphere right now at this very specific time? The second thing they talk about is how long does this molecule actually live in our atmosphere? Is it there for five years? Is it there for 120 years? What is its lifetime? And they have a very specific term when they talk about the lifetime of these molecules and it's actually pretty straightforward. It's just the global atmospheric lifetime. And essentially just what this is, is the length of time it takes to remove a gas from the atmosphere. So how long is that gas in the atmosphere? How long does it take exactly from when the carbon dioxide is produced and released into our atmosphere? How long does it take to break that molecule down and have it actually go away and leave our atmosphere? So that's just what we're talking about. Okay, so GWP, we take into account the concentration, we take into account the lifetime of the molecule, and we actually take into account the third factor is how much IR radiation that molecule actually absorbs. So does it absorb a lot of IR radiation? Does it really heat up our planet? Or is it one of them that one of the molecules just kind of heats up a little bit it doesn't really absorb that much IR radiation it's not that big of a deal so what we need to do is come up with a chart here to plot all of this out so the first thing in our chart is going to be the greenhouse gas the second thing is going to be the concentration of the molecule at the year 1750 we're also going to look at the concentration of the molecule now in the year 2015 we're going to look at the lifetime of this molecule and we're going to use the unit years, hopefully that makes sense, and then we're going to actually determine the GWP, the global warming potential. So the first one we talk about is always carbon dioxide. This is the one we compare all the other molecules to. So the concentration of carbon dioxide in 1750 was around 270 ppm. Right now it's actually just reached 400 ppm. That happened about three months ago, so scientists are not happy about that. Now carbon dioxide can last anywhere between 50 to 200 years in our atmosphere. It just depends on what it interacts with and our GWP for uh, carbon dioxide is 1. This is what we compare everything to. So carbon dioxide, is, carbon dioxide is 1. What are all the molecules? So the next one is methane or CH4. Its concentration in the year 1750 was 700 ppb or parts per billion and then in the year 2015 it is now 2,566 ppb. So this has increased a lot, okay, a lot, a lot, a lot, more than three times of its amount. It's, it's just a lot, too much. But it only lasts 12 years in the atmosphere, so it's actually not that bad for us just because its lifetime is so short. So it only has a global warming potential of 21, still worse than carbon dioxide. Now let's look at nitrous oxide or laughing gas. Its concentration was originally 275 parts per billion. Now it's right about 350, just under 350 ppb. It lasts about 120 years, so that's a big problem, which is why it has a global warming potential of 310. Now, our worst offender is actually Freon-12, okay, remember, which is just a chlorofluorocarbon, and so this had zero, a concentration of zero in the year 1750, because remember, we as humans created this, so it did not exist in the year 1750. Now, it has right about 0 0.5, 
five PPB. It was hard to get an accurate number of that right now, but from the graph I could read, it looked like it was just under 0.5, so we're just going with 0.5 for right now. And then for the lifetime, it lasts 102 years in our atmosphere, so it has a global warming potential of 8 thousand and one hundred so freon 12 is nasty it's a bad greenhouse gas not only does it destroy our ozone it also affects us in terms of global warming so let's review freon 12 here what is the molecular geometry of freon 12 and you should know the formula for it, but I'm going to give it to you just in case you've forgotten. It's CCL2F2. Go. All right, did you get an answer? Just in case you didn't, let's do it together. So carbon, remember, carbon always wants to be in the center. So we have carbon in the middle. Then we have four valence electrons on carbon. So now we're just going to take the four other atoms and try to draw it around there. So now this one actually has the, the fluorines next to each other in the cis position, and the chlorines are next to each other. And so we just draw these together like this, and then we can redraw our molecule and make it pretty. But essentially what this thing looks like is a tetra hedral. So hopefully you got that correct. It is tetrahedral. Bye guys.